tomorrow I'm going to be photographing the Huff and Cuff 5K uh, in Central Mass. Um, it's going to be probably a few hundred people. Um, the weather's supposed to be nice. Um, and I wanted to just kind of walk you through what's going in my, my regular bag. Um, so my bag is a an Amazon Basics bag. It's a dirt cheap $40 Amazon branded rucksack and it holds everything I need it to and when it dies I'll buy a nicer one. But I got this on a whim when I was photographing the Tough Mudder and was going to have to climb up a mountain and didn't want to carry my expensive uh, messenger bag. In the main pocket I have my camera, my lenses and my speed lights. My camera is a Canon 7D. I have a grip on here so I can shoot in portrait mode as well as landscape mode. And mounted on here I have a 70 to 200 f4 non-image stabilizing lens. Um, retails for about five six hundred dollars and it's incredibly sharp, very fast focusing. Not the best in low light, you'd want the f2.8 for that but that was a much more expensive lens. And I have the lens hood on here too also. In here, some of my other lenses, my other glass that will be going with me tomorrow. I have the 28 to 75 millimeter Tamron f2.8. Again, not the image stabilizing version, but this is a a nice lens. It's not as fast focusing as the Canon professional bodied lenses, but it's uh, a good performer. It's pretty sturdy. It's uh, good quality. Um, and again, the lens hood's sitting in that pocket. Those are my only two zoom lenses that I take with me. Everything else I take are primes. Uh, first of all, I have the 85mm f1.8 Canon Prime. Very, very nice lens, one of my favorites. It's uh, extremely sharp, even when it's wide open. And it's the ultrasonic focusing system, so it's very, very quick to focus. Um, I use this a lot when I'm photographing performers up on a stage in poor light. I have the same lens at the 28mm end. Again, it's an ultrasonic motor, it's an f1.8. On my Crop 7D, this is about a 50mm equivalent, um, but it's a very, very nice lens. I like that very much. And then in the middle of those two, I have the 50mm. This is the f1.8 Nifty 50. Uh, it's about a $100 lens. If you're shooting a, ca a, a, a DSLR body right now and you haven't bought one of these, um, you're still using the kit lens, get one. Um, Amazon, $100. It's a massive upgrade over the kit lenses. Um, it is only 50 millimeter, it doesn't zoom, but it's very, very sharp and it's excellent in low light. Um, I'll probably replace this at some point with the f1.4 version so I can get the ultrasonic motor that these have. But until then, this does the job. I don't actually use it very often. I'm usually at 28 or 85. That's all I use for glass. Keep it simple. <coughs> I don't use... Uh, uh, much more than that. Um, I would like to replace the Tamron with the Canon L version at some point, but you know it's money that I don't really need to spend right now, so I haven't. Um, and then I go on to my lighting gear. Um, even though I'm shooting a race and it's an outdoor race, I will take my speed lights. I'll take some light stands and I might use them. I don't know yet. Um, I'm gonna see how it looks on the day. Um, I have two speed lights I take with me. I also have some studio strobes, but these are the speed lights I carry with me. I have a 580 EX Mark II Canon lens, a Canon speed light. Um, this one has had a lot of knocks and a lot of bumps and a lot of scrapes. The entire foot is brand new. I've had that smash when a light stand fell over. Always use sandbags on your light stands. Um, and this gets knocked around a lot. It's a real workhorse and very, very nice lens, uh, light. I also have the 430 EX Mark II, it's baby brother. Um, I use this a lot for backlighting, um, for secondary lighting. These two will typically go in either a softbox, um, I have Cheetah Q-Box 16 and 24 sizes, 
Um, I also have umbrellas, I don't use them very often. Um, and I also have some white modifiers in here that I'll show you. They get triggered either using the pop-up triggering in my 7D if I'm indoors and if I'm not shooting a lot. This overheats pretty quickly. I've hit the thermal sensor several times, so I don't use that for everything. I do have a set of manual triggers, but my favorite trigger is probably like this. This is a 24-foot flashzebra.com ETTL cable. When I'm indoors or when I'm looking to do side lighting at a sports event, I'll run this across the floor. <clears throat> it's long enough that it can keep out of my way, keep out of everybody else's way. It's straight so it lays flat and it will give me complete functionality and complete control over the 580 from the back of my camera. Which means I can use the, the 580 as the master and this as the slave, the 430 as the slave. So that's the main compartment. As I say, it's keep it simple. I don't take huge amounts of gear with me. Switching over to the top, I have spare batteries, um, spare double A's. I use Sanyo Any Loops, and I have a decent charger for them. They rock. I have a spare camera battery. My grip has a slot for two. I'll usually put both in there and leave it at that, but it's in there right now. And then up here, I have my, my Flash Bus Adorama branded Think Tank Pocket Rocket with memory cards. I have a 32 gig card in there, a couple of 8 gigs, a couple of 4 gigs, and a small 2 gig. I rarely ever need to change them, fortunately. And then some lens cloths hooked in the top. That's the main compartment. In the middle compartment, this is just as crammed. In here, I have a homophoto gel case with the full homophoto gel set, both the Hollywood and the light adjustment. I did use some cheaper uh, um, flash gels and I melted them. They pop, the flash popped right through and burnt a hole in the middle of them. So I paid a bit more and got the proper system and these haven't had a, given me a day of problem. I don't regret that. I also have a camera strap. This is a Black Rapid RS5, I believe. It's the one that doesn't have the quick release on the back, but it does have the pocket on the front. And I don't necessarily like that pocket. It's a little bulky, but it does the job. And this means the camera will hang off to my side and just hang from this carabiner, which is usually either in the uh, tripod mount on the bottom of the camera or on the tripod mount on the bottom of my 70 to 200. Very comfortable, very nice to use. I have a, a Yongyo knockoff battery pack for my 580. This is to speed up the recharge rate or the refresh rate on my 580. Again, when I'm shooting sports, this is essential. It makes these 580 refresh very quickly. And this is just a series of double A's in a tray. Again, all Sanyo's. Very, very handy. As soon as I got the, literally the weekend after I bought this, I was shooting the, a race in I was shooting a triathlon and uh, I was photographing the runners and this was uh, able me to shoot every single one of those runners as they went past. I think there were 8,000 people. And it's the knockoff version, it's not Canon's branded version, but it does the job just as nicely. And then onto light modifiers. So I use my 580 and my 430 as my main lights. I do have studio strobes, I have a set of Genesis 200s, but the 580 and 430 are my primary lights now. So I have some flash or some strobe, um, uh, some strobist style modifiers in here. The first one I've just got this. This is a LumiQuest Softbox 3. 
and it just opens out and velcros on around the flash. This is really useful when I'm doing small photography for toys and figurines that I photograph or if I'm doing facial portraits or kids. Um, it doesn't work obviously when it's on the camera, it's designed to be put on a light stand um, or it gets handheld. But I've just got this, it's, it's very nice, I like it. I would have got the LTP, which is the laptop sized one, it's about 15 inch in diameter, but uh, this came up at a good price so I snagged it. I have my LumiQuest pocket bounce in here. So this just sits on the top of the flash and all that gives me a bounce surface. I've used this outdoors with a 580EX on a light pole um, to get some light onto a face of a subject when, were, when the sun was going down. It does the job. Um, the 8020 is probably better for the job, but that's what I've got. I have my original LumiQuest softbox, which is the smaller version of the softbox 3, and does, but does pretty much the same thing. This one's a little beat. I'm starting to get starting to tear in the front just from opening and closing it constantly. I don't use this so much anymore. Now I also have two bounce cards. These are either for putting in the back of the flash. Let me show you. These are either for cell taping to the back of the flash as a bouncer, like that, or as a flag. Put them on the side so I can point forward and not get any spill. These are made out of uh, very technical corrugated cardboard that came from a craft store. I have a couple of those and uh, amazingly I paid about 10 cents for the card and these things are still around probably a couple of years ago now. In here the last couple of things I have the speed light feet just in case I don't have a light stand nearby I can put them feet on and I have a grey card uh, which I use if I am ever in a really tricky white balance situation. Oh, I also have the Honol speed grid. Um, can't say I've ever really used this and had it be effective. It, it does what it does, I just have never really had a uh, need for that. Uh, if you wonder what a speed grid is, it basically focuses the light from your speed light in one direction only, so it doesn't spill off to the sides. If you look now, you can actually see straight through it, you can see my hand, but as soon as I start turning it, the light won't go through on an angle. So it's just a way to control the light. I, I don't really use it, it's actually starting to melt a little bit from pops. And the last pocket on the very front there isn't really anything interesting in here. This is the miscellaneous pocket. Like any camera bag, I have some spare lens caps and body caps. I have a remote trigger so I can fire my camera when I'm not near it or if I want to be in the picture for a family portrait. And most importantly, in any camera bag, every photographer, a Leatherman. Just some way to cut the duct tape, to tear the bags when you need to uh, make yourself a waterproof a hood or something like that. So that's a walkthrough of my main bag. Um, I also have a white stand bag full of white stands and tripods and monopods and I have uh, bags full of backdrops um, but if I'm shooting an event I'll grab this. I'll grab a monopod and a white stand and call it a day. That's a walkthrough of my bag. Um, hope uh, you, you know, learned something. If you've got any questions around what I've got um, shoot me an email, paul at root2photo.com.